So this is the third day when okay. you came back. Yeah. On day one, we talked about the stab scratch. The importance of you understanding how to articulate the stab was going to help you to also generate more accuracy, improve your timing, and get faster, right? By the end of the first lesson, you and I were going back and forth with the stab with ease. <laughs> actually fun I felt like I was scratch I, I didn't really feel like I was scratching with a student I felt like I was scratching with like a peer of mine like another DJ that tours and, and all that shit you know what I mean then on day two we talked about strengthening your weak hand in your case your weak hand is on the left turntable you were great at articulating the stab on the right you were scratching confidently the minute I put you on the left you were stumbling more it was hard for you to phrase your scratches. You just weren't in control of the record the way you are on the right turntable. So we talked about training with a specific scratch that is called a forward release, right? Forward release, you're just taking the sound, you're only letting the sound go forward, and you close the fader before pulling the record back. And even the, the most simplest forward release was kind of, yeah, it was tough for you. That basically tells us is that we needed to spend time comprehending the movements with regards to the stab and the forward release. Mm -hmm. We focus more on comprehension the first two days of our practice. What is the scratch? Why does it sound the way it sound? What could we do to execute the scratch sharper? With regards to that, we learned that the shorter the stroke, the quicker your scratches could get. The longer the, the, the stroke, you get more of the sound, but it's a farther distance for you to pull back to the beginning. So you can't go, but so fast when you let the, the strokes go longer. So we were just spending time really comprehending what the forward stab felt and sounded like and what the forward release felt and sounded like. Today, we're going to focus now on articulation of, of these two techniques and how to mix in other scratches that you're comfortable doing. I don't want you to worry about sounding like me or anyone else for that matter. You're gonna scratch like yourself using the, the grammar, the scratch grammar that you know, that you're comfortable using as you're phrasing your scratches, okay? okay? Now, typically what people do is they throw on a, a looper on one side, they get an ah or a fresh, and then they scratch over that looper. And that's cool. Technically, you are practicing your scratches, but there's nothing like scratching to actual music. Mm -hmm. And not that a looper isn't music, but the danger in a looper is that it's a beat that 99% of the time doesn't change. Mm -hmm. So it's like an eight bar loop, sometimes a four bar loop, and it's just going over Continuous. and over and over and over and over again. So then you're not really, you don't realize it while you're practicing, but you're not getting the inspiration to articulate your scratches in unique ways. You're not really being inspired to get creative as you're moving because it's this like monotone beat that just plateaus. There's no real emotion in the music. Break beats, like the one that we're gonna practice with today, for me, are the best type of beats to practice your scratches with. A, you're forced to understand how to adapt 
to a sound that isn't ah. Mm. Like if I give you ah, you're gonna know what to do with it already. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you've been scratching ah for super long, like most of us. But if I give you a horn hit like this, it's gonna force you to approach it slightly different than an ah. It's not as long of a sound, yes. right? There's a kick drum underneath the horn hit in the beginning, and there's other instrumentation before and after this horn hit. Let's listen to it. So I'm gonna rewind it. And now let's listen to the instrumentation after the horn hit. So as a result, this particular spot in the song forces you to be strict in how far you let that horn hit go. Because if you if you pull back, you're hearing the horns prior to the hit on the one. And and it's one thing to have a beat. In your case, on Friday, you were scratching, you pulled back too far, and you got the beat. <laughs> Fine, big, no big deal. But here, there is. Yeah, going back to the, so that could be a vocal before a breakdown and track. And, and it's and it's not gonna sound good at <laughs> yeah. all. At least if you pull back in on the ah and you inadvertently end up on the beep, you could freak the beep and still sound like you meant to get on that get on, on, on that beep and and get busy, right? But here. <laughs> That's just super noisy, and it'll take a pro to understand what to do with this sound, this random sound, to make it sound good. If you let the horn hit play out a little longer than you would want to, again, this is just not an optimal sound to be scratching. So, so what's happening is, this is, yo man, when you think about it, Obi, this is like, it's it's a beautiful art, man. Because without the 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 people that made the song, John Davis and the Monster Orchestra, mm -hmm. right? They didn't intend for us to use the song the way like we're using this. it, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? But there's nuances that they created with this song that actually teaches us scratchers and DJs in a way that. If you use an actual scratch sound, quote unquote, like an ah or fresh, we we we're, we won't learn certain important intricacies of movement and and strictness and distance mm. that we get with this song. And it's funny because it's not like they created this song with the intention of me using this as a tool to teach you. You know what I mean? It's it's really bugged out. <laughs> so. Because of these interesting, cool nuances of the song, we have to kind of pay attention to our technique. The thing about cutting breaks is that there's no time for you to think. You're gonna scratch, drop, and automatically your brain is gonna send signals to your, to your hand to rewind. We're not gonna use the cue points. You're gonna have to rewind, right? Cue up the, the, the horn hit, and as a result, all of this starts to happen subconsciously without you really thinking about it. It's going to be like walking to you. Right, exactly. And when, when you're tapping into the subconscious part of your mind, Obi, that's when the creativeness comes out. Because for me, I notice when I practice and I come up with all my beat juggling routines, it's when I'm just up here almost having like an out-of-body experience, like watching myself, listening to myself, coax all these cool rhythms out of the speaker and I'm not really thinking I'm just moving like my body my limbs know what they need to do and then every now and then I'm I feel impulses to move a certain way and then I'm listening what is happening after I moved as a result of receiving that impulse you're gonna start to notice the same thing there's no real time to think I want to do this scratch you're just gonna move cuz you want to get in and out of these beats before the break ends Right, so this is about how long you have to scratch. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 
seven. Eight bars. You want to oh, get out God. before before that hit. So you yeah. want to get out before you want to get out before right that. on the hit. Right on the hit is when you want to get out before the bass line starts. At eight. At, uh, after uh, eight. After so, eight. After eight. It's a one. So at eight point like at nine, but like right. early. early at, nine. at nine. No, right on right, nine. Right, right, right. Which is actually the one yeah, of the I following know. bar yes, exactly. is where you want to drop. Yeah. So you only have eight bars to express yourself. So there's no time. If you have a looper and it's running for four minutes, five minutes, you could just be there scratching and like thinking about the patterns you want. And, and, and there's not much of a... There's not a need for you to think on your feet. Because the looper's not going to end. So you, yeah, so you just, you know it's coming, you know it's going to keep going. Right, yeah. exactly. And then what happens is the looper almost lulls you into this, like, realm of, like... Cruise control. Yeah, you're on cruise control and you're scratching and you're moving, but you're not really feeling the, imp the impulses that are generated in your body when you're going back and forth, rewinding, moving the, the headphone cue to the right side to rewind like you're you're just going you know what i mean and and that's what we're going to work on now okay. now we establish the balance with both hands and we comprehend the importance of the stab and the forward release we're going to apply those two scratches and others with going back to back we're going to loop the beat over and over again and add scratches to enhance the music that that we're that we're playing that we're listening to okay I do not like to listen to myself scratching in my headphone. It, it, it just bothers me. I'd rather hear myself out of the speaker with the drum beat that I'm scratching to, right? So you're going to notice that every time I set up to scratch, I turn the volume down. Oh, I see. And then I start doing the scratch. I'll do the drop. And then I need to turn the volume back up to cue up the opposite side because we're not using the cue pads. Okay. okay? Would a better chance be to just go to the opposite side on the on the fader. That's another option you have. If you want, you'll go to the opposite side so you hear the drum beat in your oh, headphones you're while you're scratching you're out of the speaker. Um, and obviously you just covered it for me. The headphone fader allows you to go from channel one to channel two, okay? So whenever you drop, the objective is to set yourself back up to the top of the horn hit on the opposite turntable Moving the headphone fader allows you to hear yourself rewind to the spot that you need, okay? Otherwise, how are you going to know how many rotations to spin? You won't. You won't, no, that's right. Yeah, that's yeah exactly, so, exactly, because you're too focused on doing the scratches. And you have to manually do it instead of just hitting the cue pad. Exactly, we're not using this, okay? Right. Right. We're only focused on this area of the mixer. Okay. got to this side and you fell apart like you weren't paying attention to where the serrata was i have to I, have, I feel like i have to black out this whole side so i don't see the pad because i'm almost inclined to like want to reach for the pad to, and, to, to fly as a short cord instead of like manually doing it manually doing it trust your instincts over anything over, over yeah, here yeah that's what it is like i'm not like when i'm doing it i'm like okay i might miss have i missed it have i caught it like you know 
Remember, if you if you if you're debating whether or not you're on the sound, fixate where the serato is. Let's let's both look at the serato. It's right there. It's right there. It's not going to disappear. You know what I mean? So make the adjustment. If you're over here, fix the serato positioning. If you're over here, fix the serato positioning. Just amend where your hand is moving the serato. That's all. Okay? No need to hit the pad. I mean, if you think about it, Grandmaster Flash, Jazzy J, Grounds of Theodore, Grand Mixer DST, they didn't have pads. Oh, this, yeah. And they were they were figuring out where the sounds were and sticking to that yeah. sound. The focus is really here. Yeah. yeah, right, right. You know what I call this area, Obi? God space. <laughs> Seriously. I see, I see. Th this area, dude, like this and right here, yeah. this is well, God space to me, man. Because this is really where the true creativity exists. Right there. The magic's not here, bro. Like, you can see dudes hitting the pads all day. Anybody, I could teach your mom right now to hit, hit a pad That's rhythmically. Good. You know what I mean? But moving the crossfader and the record hand and then coaxing. That's, that's, that's creativity, dude, that's coming from my soul. That's, that's the part of me that, that creates. You mm. know what I mean? Yeah. This is robotic, mechanical. Enhanced. Enhanced, that's artificial yeah. bullshit. That's you know what I mean? Yeah. This right here, dude, this is all you. This space right here is all you, man. The best DJs can, can DJ without this shit. Like they can here. block, they can block yeah. that out of their mind. All this shit, man. Like, they, I, they only reach for it for tricks or something. Seriously, like, yeah, like yeah. I, I could put this record. Over there. Not many DJs could put this record over their pads and catch. I can't stop. <laughs> It's just like it's it's an illusion because it, it makes you like you know I know dudes that are like <laughs> and they're like I'm killing it I'm like the illest DJ and it's like yo no you're not dude like, like you're really not that ill like if if I take this away can you still rely on your natural abilities yeah do you have the turntable instincts to navigate through a song and make it sound interesting without relying on these pads? <laughs>
put some transformers there. I, I don't even transform on the right. right. Instead of trying to just use the headphone, let this be like a control. So when I catch it, I turn it down. Exactly. And then I go in. So I caught that. It's about having a system that you yes, apply to exactly. operating this area. Yeah. And you just stick to that same system. Yeah. That's all. And